And we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. It's another live stream. It's Saturday, January 29th, 2022. It's 11.02 a.m. Pacific time here in Las Vegas. So good to see everybody. Hope you can see me and hear me okay. I'm streaming in 1080p, 60 frames per second uh, here today. And um, hopefully the replay will be in 1080p, 60 frames per second. The last one only showed in 1080p. While it was live, it was 60 frames. Not really sure what's going on. The others were no problem. Uh, let's say hello to a few people before we begin. Let's say hi to uh, Luis here. Uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, X X360 that I have here today, the uh, one you're looking at right here. This is the X360 from HP Spectre's line. It's a 16 inch OLED with a 3050 GPU, RTX 3050. We'll get into that in a moment. We've got William here, good to see you. Uh, good, uh, good having you here on the live stream, of course, a moderator. And uh, please hit that like button as William is suggesting here. Uh, helps get this spread out over YouTube. Uh, we're going to talk about no numpad on this so some people are uh, not happy about that some people don't care some people are uh, happy about it but we'll see good to see handquake here another member and moderator of the channel and then of course we got legal Le lethal not legal <laughs> lethal emperor good to see you i haven't seen you in a while uh live streaming yes we are coming up with this hp spectre x360 uh, looks like we have 40 of you watching we have 14 likes so again hit that like button we got super chat super stickers memberships all help support the channel you know the deal people uh everything is definitely appreciated we got digital slang here another great youtuber uh good to see you my friend hope you are well uh, doing well in, in in new jersey where if you have a snowstorm there i know i'm reading on the news hopefully it's not too bad and then, uh, and if you and people, if you haven't checked out Digital Slang, great channel, great audio guy, great mobile phone, smartphone guy. He knows what he's talking about and a really good, good person. Um, sadly, it's 11th gen. We're going to talk about why this is 11th gen. Um, and then some people are not happy about the numpad. But good to see everybody again. Uh, let's get right to the matter. And we see here, this is the OLED version. Now, I did do, if you follow my channel, you know I did do an an unboxing and first look review, which was pretty comprehensive. I think it was 22 minutes uh, where I was able to do the um, the one with the XE graphics. So the base model with the 3K plus display, IPS display. Now this is not that. This is of course the one with the OLED display. This is a 16 inch display. So they've moved away from the 15.6 inch from the 15 model from last year. And now we have a 16 inch uh, with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. There's some design cues that are different. The gem cut design is not as pronounced. It's a little bit more rounded edges. I think it looks great. It's not as harsh as previous models with those really sharp edges. This is a lot better. And of course, this is the familiar Nightfall Black as we've come to know uh, from this line. Uh, this is nothing new here. Uh, this Nightfall Black with uh, pale brass accents. Uh, we've seen it before. Now, the one I did with the um, with the XE graphics, the base model, uh, had this beautiful nocturne blue with celestial blue accents, which I absolutely love. If you haven't checked out that video, go over to my channel. It's there uh, and check it out. Now, one thing you're gonna know about this, of course, is that this I was waiting for for a long time. This was announced uh, in late, 2021 late last year or or sort of at the end of the summer i guess but because of the supply constraints and delays of course i just got this model into the studio from hp uh, i'm not being paid or being sponsored by hp as you know but uh this is a review unit and i will be doing my formal video on it uh, probably will drop it tomorrow or monday depending on how much i get done i've already filmed the a lot of it so and of course, I've already done the base model, so you can see there the different colors. And of course, this is the different um, SKU, which of course has the RTX 3050, which is a discrete GPU. Now, what's the big deal about that? Well, if your general purpose use is gonna be Microsoft Office email web browsing, you're perfectly fine with that model. I reviewed with the XE graphics, which are the integrated or built-in graphics. And then of course, um, if you need something with a little bit more oomph and you need a, a display that does cover the color ga gamut better, has even better color accuracy, this is the one you wanna look at. So 
Uh, I did some initial measurements of the metrics on this display, and you're looking at uh, about 385 nits, so it's definitely bright enough. Uh, and you're also getting excellent coverage of the color gamut. I'm seeing 100% sRGB, close to 100% or high 90s in the uh, Adobe RGB, which is great. High 90s in the um, P3, which is great. And of course, NTSC also mid to high 90s. So excellent, excellent display if you are a content creator who do, does color grading, Photoshop, Lightroom, things like that, you're definitely going to like this display. Um, now, as far as, and we'll get to your comments and questions in a moment, but let's go over the overview. What it's running is a Core i7-11390H. Now, this is a 35-watt uh, CPU as opposed to the 45 watt we had last year in the 15 inch model. But I am seeing probably a little bit better performance despite the fact that this is a 35 watt GPU, uh, CPU rather, as opposed to the 45 watt uh, CPU. So we're going to get more into that in that full review, which we'll be dropping in a day or so, as I mentioned. Now, so the performance is not going to be groundbreaking, people. This is not a 12th gen processor. This was announced late last year. And of course, late shipping, of course, we finally got it. Uh, but it's definitely going to be good enough for everything you're going to probably want to do with this for the average consumer. If you are a content creator, you can definitely edit video on this. It's not the greatest, but it is definitely a great display when it comes to color grading, uh, editing, and stuff like that. You'll be perfectly fine with Photoshop, Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, and, and stuff like that. So you're really going to really like this display. Now, one of the things you're going to want to know about this display, it is a glossy display. You can actually see some of the reflections already uh, in my studio. I do have my studio light, so bear that in mind. But I, I think it's a really gorgeous display. I mean, you know, if you really look at it, um, you're going to really like it. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to one of my videos. Um, let's go to the and if, for those that didn't see that unboxing video, let's take a look at it. And it's the number one in search, so that's good. Um, and here you see it, and we can put it in full screen. And one of the things you're going to love about an OLED display, and I think it goes without saying, is the really deep blacks, the super great high contrast that you get with it. And you're going to really enjoy watching movies, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube. You're really going to like it on this. It really is an excellent display. Now, uh, if we go here, uh, you can actually see it. So uh, I, I'm really happy with this display. Uh, it's a 60 hertz display, so you don't get the high refresh rate we've been seeing as of late. Kind of wish it was a little bit higher. Maybe 90, 120 would have been great. 120 we saw on the Surface Pro 8. We saw it on the Surface Laptop Studio, so it would have been great on that. Um, starting price, I think it's less than $16.29. This was about a month ago when I did this video. It's now, I think, about $15.99 or maybe even less for the entry-level model. My unit is going for around $2,000 with the OLED display and so forth. I'll have pricing and everything uh, after this is done. I'll put in the link below, and I'll also have it in my video that is upcoming. Let's take a uh, let's let's talk to some of you. Let's say hello. We already said hello to a few people. Let's get to some of your con comments and questions. Uh, Dr. Paul is asking, hi, Andrew, it's, I, I'm interested in purchasing the Spectre X360 for my first laptop, but I am interested in the webcam. That was a weakness for the 15.6 inch laptop. This is not a weakness, uh, Dr. Paul. This is actually a pretty good webcam. Now they call it the Glam Cam. It's a 1080p webcam. Uh, we could take a look at it right now. Actually, it might even go higher. I don't remember. Let me, let me bring up the camera here. Um, let me go here and we can take a look at the camera. Now there is a shutter switch you can use a, a that will cover the, the camera for more security and privacy. And there I am, and you can see it here. Let's go to full screen here. Um, really, really good stuff here. Uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. All right. So what do we have here? Let's go to the settings here and let's just take, make a look, uh, take a look at it. It's 1080p. Yes. Yeah, 1080p. I'm sorry. I thought it might've been higher. Um, it's a five megapixel webcam. So you're looking at some pretty nice colors. You, it's not overly saturated, but I think it looks good. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Uh, it also has some pretty interesting features. We're gonna talk about it. We could talk about it right now. So if I go to, let's go to the, if I press this button here, number four. So if I go to this button and I can show it to you here, 
there is a key on the keyboard. If I press that, I can bring up the command center and Omen Gaming Hub and stuff like that. And you can see here, uh, there are some different things you can do here. Let's go to the web, the glam cam. Let's go next. First time I'm using it on this one. Now preview is disabled. Why is it disabled? Is it because it needs to load in or do I have the camera open still? Um, oh, here, camera preview. There we go. And it's not letting me do it. So let me see. Maybe I'm not. Uh, do I have it disabled? Hold on. That's to turn it off. Why can't I get the camera working? And it is working, ladies and gentlemen. Finally. All right. So, and I'll get to your comments and questions. There's a walk away lock feature. That means you can walk away and it will lock your computer. Walk on a wake on approach. That means it'll detect your presence and it will wake up the computer. Attention tracking, I think, keeps you within the screen. So if you move around and stuff like that, it'll do that. Shoulder surfing. So if somebody's over my shoulder, it will blur out what's on the display. So uh, if you're trying to... Have, you have sensitive documents or sensitive information, I should say, on the display. You're going to uh, be able to get that security and privacy. I like that. Um, you also have the beauty mode here. And, oh, here's the auto frame. So here you see that it frames me. If I move here, I move there. It'll probably, and it's not as fast as the Mac, I noticed, but uh, definitely can use that. And then, of course, there's lighting correction. So if you're in a strangely lit environment it definitely can help out in that regard so you got beauty mode you got all this stuff and again uh, a lot of features walk away feature i kind of like i like the fact that it wakes on approach i like the shoulder surfing protection that you get on this uh pretty good so again if we go to the camera here and i think it's really important as we're working from home in the hybrid work environment that we find ourselves in you see that this is a really really good camera not the crap we've been seeing uh, last year and so forth. This is a lot better. Good to see Aditya here. Love the centered keyboard and trackpad. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a moment. Lethal Emperor says the uh, camera looks good. Uh, you like it. So the one, um, this is my main camera, but of course the one you're looking at on the right to, the, to me is of course the one on the, on, the, on the laptop itself. And I do like it. So it is a very good camera. Uh, let's talk about the keyboard a little bit. Keyboard does not have a numpad. That's the other thing that we saw uh, with the blue one that I reviewed, the base model with the XE graphics. This has a pretty nice centered touchpad, of course. Good tactile feedback, good key travel, uh, pretty nice in that regard. The 5 megapixel, according to Dr. Uh, Paul, the 5 megapixel webcam looks great. For my virtual assemblies at schools, loving the glam cam. Yeah, I think it's a nice feature. It's one of the key features, I think, uh, this year. And I think we're going to see more laptops with that. Uh, Rico the Beast is saying, what's the resolution? So the resolution is 3840 by 2400. And if you're keeping score, that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And that's about 11% more vertical space than you got last year with that 15.6 inch 16 to 9 display. So 11% more vertical space. And that's going to give you less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. You'll see more on the display. It's be great for spreadsheets. It's going to be great for uh, Word documents. So stuff like that. Great for productivity. I like that. Um, so that's the resolution, and Rico the Beast likes the re the camera as well. I think that's two things on this this, this um, laptop that I'm really liking, and that is, of course, the fact that it does have that really nice OLED display, UHD plus resolution. I like the fact that you're getting a 1080p webcam, 5 megapixel webcam, and I think that is a game changer. I don't know, is the 3050 Ti, uh, I don't remember, let me see. I may have put the wrong one. Let me see. Um, let's go to the device manager here. Let's go to display adapters. 3050. So it's showing a 3050. If you see that right there on the, on the screen. Uh, laptop GPU from NVIDIA. We know this one. Not the most powerful, but definitely a lot better than the one we saw with the, um, with the, XE graphics, the integrated XE graphics, uh, ports. Let's go over the ports, and I can show you the, the, the same ports, obviously, just different color. On the left side, you have your power jack, I'm sorry, your uh, 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack in that corner, I believe. Let me just see. 
Yeah. And then, oh no, I'm sorry. That's your power port. So that's going to where you plug it in. And then of course you have your uh, HDMI port and then you have a drop jaw, drop jaw USB-A port. That's the only USB-A port on this laptop. Uh, on the right side, of course, you're going to have, and then you see the it pulls down in order to access that USB-A port. Um, and then on the right side, of course, you have your micro SD card slot, not a full-size SD card slot. Uh, one of your two Thunderbolt 4 ports, they are full service. They do data charge, display out, you can charge with it. And there's your second one. Uh, that's the power port. The other one was your 3.5 millimeter. I got that a little bit mixed up, but anyway, uh, you get the drift. So you got the gem cut corners, you got the more rounded edges, which is a difference from last year. Uh, and you can obviously see it here in this shot as well. So there you have it with this. Uh, good to see Jeremy. How are you? Um, good, glad to see you. Off topic, have you heard about results from MSI GE76 gaming laptop, the first with the i9-1200HK Alder Lake mobile chip? I have not, but I know some, maybe a couple other reviewers have. I'm working on getting one from MSI. I've spoken to MSI. Hopefully, we'll get that soon. Now, if we go back here... You'll notice the two fans for cooling. I've already um, obviously took the cover off and I went inside this laptop on that uh, initial unit that I have. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here, you now have, I believe it's an 82 watt hour battery. You also get uh, upgradable SSD, which of course is a, um, a must nowadays. Now, the one I had on that one was the Optane memory. We'll take a look at this one in the video coming up I have on this one. Uh, but it worked well. I mean, it was uh, definitely Gen 3 type speeds, as you see here. So I'm going to test all that on the, the unit I have here today. Uh, so we'll see on which one we're going to get on that. In fact, we can probably just go to the device manager. here. I just want to see something real quick uh, as far as storage is concerned. And uh, we'll see what they have here. Disk drives. This is also the Optane. So I'm expecting it to be pretty much the same as the one I saw in the last one. So not Gen 4. I don't know if it supports Gen 4. I'm going to find out if it does. Uh, good, good. Uh, Aparov, uh, everyone like this stream right now. Hit the like button. That would be great. I really appreciate it. We have right now 73 of you watching, only 35 likes. What's the deal, people? Don't embarrass me, okay? <laughs> All right. Do you, uh, according to Sarthik, do you know anything about the performance of Intel's new Arc GPU? Not yet, but I should be getting something in very soon. We, we could talk more about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, battery life better than the 15.6 OLED. Yeah, it is better. Um, even though this is an OLED display, I'm, I'm seeing already, again, I just got it early yesterday and I've been testing it about seven to eight hours uh, video playback. Uh, depending on what you're doing. That's not bad for the OLED. Now, on the IPS one that I reviewed with the integrated graphics, the 3K display one with the, the blue one, um, I actually got a really great numbers, 13 hours plus on my continuous web surfing test. You're going to look anywhere from 10 to 11 hours on that one, a mixed use. So you're definitely seeing better um, uh, battery life, not surprisingly, on the IPS display and with the integrated graphics. Seven to eight hours on this one so far, but again, I need to do my full testing. We'll see uh, what the final results will be. Uh, William is asking, what is the power rating of the power adapter? So this time around, it's 130, it's 135 watt power adapter as opposed to the 90 watt power adapter that we got last time. Um, and so that's better. Uh, it's 130 watts, I'm sorry, 130 watts. And um, it's not a big brick. And I'll show you in the video. It's pretty much on par with what we saw with the 90 watts. So pretty compact for a uh, more powerful uh, power adapter. So that's been pretty good. Uh, Weight-wise, and we can talk about weight. Um, let me go right here. So we're talking about what the size is and everything and let it get the graphics. Again, this was the blue model. I have the, I had that one. I don't have it anymore. That's the Nocturne blue with the celestial blue accents. And then of course, we're going to talk about weight, which I think is 3.99 pounds or 4.45 pounds or 2.018 kilograms for that model, maybe a little bit heavier on this model. So we're going to see uh, when I do final finalize that video i'll give you all the weight numbers and so forth but you're looking at a little bit over four pounds not too bad for a 16 inch convertible laptop of course uh 
They're not the lightest things in the world, but definitely uh, portable for a 16-inch laptop. All right, so let's go back to your questions here. Um, so with that's as far as the weight is concerned, awesome information. I'm glad you like it, Dwight. Is 50 watts of GPU limits enough for a 3050? It's not going to blow you out of the water as far as that TDP. So uh, I've seen a lot better. But again, this is not supposed to, this is more of a general purpose laptop that is going to be sort of like the jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing. So it's trying to do a lot to please a lot of people. Again, this is their Spectre line. And not unlike the Envy line, this is their flagship. So they're going to go after as many people as they can with this. So there you go. According to Arib, I followed your channel and got my first laptop after watching my reviews. Thank you. Uh, Lenovo IdeaPad 5 Pro, one of my favorites uh, from last year. Absolutely loving it. Keep up the good work. Well, Arib, I'm glad you like it, and I'm glad I was of help with my reviews, and that makes me feel good because that's the purpose of me doing it, right? Um, and there you go. Let me keep going through some of your questions and comments. I apologize in advance if I do miss them. I'm doing the best I can. I am one person. The color gamut for the OLED screen, Jeremy, uh, I mentioned it a little bit, but we can talk about it here. Um, you're looking at 100% sRGB. You're looking at uh, uh, close to 100%, I think 98% Adobe RGB. You're looking at at least 95 to 100% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut. And you're looking at uh, 95 or above on NTSC. So what does that mean in real world, uh, real language, uh, plain language? It means that this is an excellent display if you're doing color grading, if you're doing Lightroom, Photoshop, uh, if you're doing video editing, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, this is the display you want. This is the definitely, and it's also, I think I got a 0 0.80, 0 0.8, color accuracy score and the Delta E score. So that means this is a very, very color accurate. And of course, with the OLED, you're getting the really deep blacks, you're getting the vibrant colors, everything that comes with that. So there you go. It is really, really good. And so far, I'm very impressed. The hinges look like they will fail after a year. Uh, I don't know. I think the, the hinges are okay. Now, this is a two-in-one. You're going to have screen wobble, as you see there. Um, the hinges are pretty stiff, actually. In fact... I want to show you, you can open it with one finger. Um, and let me move this here. And I don't know why. But I'll show you here. Hold on. So you can open it with one finger. Windows hello. As you saw, very quick Windows hello. And there you go. We got our first super chat. Let's bring it on to the stream here. It's from uh, Michael. A fifth, uh, five Canadian dollar super chat. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, thanks for the info. I have one on order. Looking forward to working with this platform. And I, I think, Michael, you're going to like it. I, 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 there's a lot to like here. Uh, I think this is a really nice overall general purpose laptop. It's a convertible. Now, it does come with the pen, Michael. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. It's the one that uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0. I alluded to it a little bit in the last video I did on it. So works pretty well. Same as a Surface Pen in terms of the technology, that type. It will work on this. Uh, it's nice that they do include it. Now, they also do include a sleeve in the box, a full leather sleeve. Same one you saw in that video. So if you didn't check it out, uh, I'll show you in the upcoming video as well. Let me get some coffee here. <coughs> a little bit dry throat today. But I want to thank Michael from Canada for that five Canadian dollar super chat. I do appreciate it. Super chat, super stickers are open, people. Memberships have been growing as of late. I'm going to be doing something special for members. I'm revamping that. So if you want to become a member, help out on a monthly basis, uh, that would be much, much appreciated. Of course, not required because as long as you watch and give me the watch time, that's the best kind of interaction I can ask for. All right. So let me ask uh, Pablo here. Pablo is actually saying, I'm, I'm hours away from buying the Asus VivoBook 14X Pro for less than 1,000 euros. Have you tried any of them? No, but I did speak to uh, Asus, and I should be getting a bunch of stuff coming in, uh, some of the new stuff. So stay tuned on that. Uh, we got 87 of you watching. We've got uh, 57 likes, so that's been pretty good. Uh, people, hit that like button. It helps get, get spread out over YouTube. Uh, we covered the color gamut. We've covered all that. 
Any other questions on this? Would like to see a review of the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. Again, I, I just spoke to o, um, Asus this week. They're getting me some stuff, some 12th gen. So I will have it as soon as it comes in. Again, I don't know the timetable, but I will be getting it in. Yeah, that's what I really like about the Spectre line, according to Mat Matsu's, uh, those little details like including a good quality sleeve. So uh, I have the sleeve over there. I can maybe bring it if you want to see it. I did show it a little bit in the unboxing video. It's a nice touch that they do include the sleeve and they do include this pen here. So for those wondering, again, this is the pen, uh, if you want to see it here, and there it is. Uh, it, it, it's a good, it's a nice value add, I think. And I think the fact that you're getting it uh, and it sticks magnetically pretty securely, actually, so you don't lose it. Um, and, and it's a pretty nice value add, and you can see it there. Uh, all right, let's talk about the keyboard a little bit. I know I, I started to allude to it, and then I got a little distracted. Um, so what we're looking at here is a different layout, of course. There's no numpad. They now have these grills here. They remove the grill from the top. Uh, this has quad speakers, people. So I know somebody was saying it didn't have quad speakers in the last. This has quad speakers. They're actually pretty good. They're Bang & Olufsen speakers. Uh, the keyboard, good tactile feedback. It's got uh, a multi-stage backlight here. So to do that, you just have a button right here on the keyboard. And you can sort of see it there. Just a couple of stages. But again, against the dark keys, lights up white. I have no complaints. Uh, no numpad, as we talked about. There is no number crunching feature on this. So if you want a numpad, you're out of luck on this. Now, if you want the Envy, the, there is one 15-inch version of the Envy that does have the numpad. Check out one of my videos on that. We did that extensively last year. So I don't know what the new year brings, but we'll see very soon, hopefully. Um, and so there, no numpad. The, among the other differences, it's really good key travel. I'm thinking 1.5 millimeters, pretty good. Uh, good tactile feedback. And again, good key travel. I like it. It's comfortable. It's 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 pretty good, I got to say. No haptic touchpad, right? So, Jeremy, no haptic touchpad. Uh, HP tends to go a little bit more conservative on their uh, approach to that. I know they've been looking at it. They've been talking to Sensil and all these other companies. So... Uh, not this time around, but I wouldn't count it out maybe in the next generation, but not yet. Now, uh, I know Windows laptops are starting to go towards haptic touchpads, ThinkPad Z series, Surface Laptop Studio, XPS 13 Plus, etc. So no uh, t haptic touchpad on this. It's your um, basic, uh, very responsive glass touchpad. It's a um, precision touchpad. It works very well. You can see the scrolling is very good. We can go to my website. Uh, to give you a demonstration here. So if I go for here, and we can go here, I can show you the scrolling. Again, this is a 60 hertz display, OLED display. It's not 90, it's not 120, not the higher refresh we've been seeing, uh, but still great nonetheless. It's a gorgeous display and a very responsive touchpad. And you can do pinch to zoom, you can do all your gestures and so forth. So there you go. So you can see you really have a lot of uh, responsiveness to this. And I think it's been pretty good so far. It's been pretty good. Is it? Yes, it's using the precision drivers. Um, I don't believe it's using the, hap the synaptics um, like they used to use in the past. But we can go to the, the device manager here. Let's take a look. And let's see if we can get anything on that. So the keyboard, uh, let's see. Oh, it, maybe it does have a it does have a synaptics touchpad. It's showing here. Hold on, but I think it's precision drivers. So I've been seeing that as of late as well. So it says synaptics there, precision drivers. I'm thinking that's what that is, right? So again, precision drivers though. So I don't think it's using any synaptics drivers, but it is a synaptics touchpad. What you see here. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right, the backlight on the black keys looks better than the backlight on the silver keys on the Envy. Absolutely, um, Lethal Emperor. You know my feelings on that. Uh, one of my biggest gripes on that was you couldn't see the keys because the white of the LED backlights would drown out the silver keys. Don't have that here. You don't have that here. Uh, hi, I'm looking. Let me just do something here. 
Okay. Hi, I'm looking for an upgrade and hesitate between the Spectre 14, which has, by the way, a 3 to 2 aspect ratio, and the Spectre 16, that's a 16 to 10, with integrated graphics. Any thoughts on that? Will you compare those laptops eventually? Keep up the good work. Uh, just, you know, that's not a bad idea. Maybe I can do it. I have both. Uh, one, again, like I said, the 14-inch is actually a 13.5-inch display. That is a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. I love that. A little bit even taller nature on that display. And then, of course, this one, which you see here, has that 16 to 10 aspect ratio, 16-inch display. So hope that answered that question. There might, might be a good idea to do a uh, video on. Maybe we might do that. <coughs> yes, they are precision drivers, as I suspected. Again, but it is using the uh, touchpad that we talked about. How much of the TDP of the RTX 3050? I believe it's 50 watts, but somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. So not the fastest one that they have out there. And again, the Core i7 11390H, that is a 35-watt 11th gen processor from uh, from Intel. And it actually is actually on par or even exceeds a bit last year, which was a 45-watt 10th gen uh, CPU on last year's model. So just bear that in mind. Would be amazing to have a comparison between the new versus the old 15. I do have the 15 with the OLED. That's not a bad idea. I, I could do that. I could bring that out. It's here, but I'd have to set it up for a comparison. But maybe I could do a video. If I get enough demand, I could show you the differences. Now, this is a really beautiful OLED display. Uh, I got to say, I'm very, very impressed with it. Uh, very clear, very sharp display. Um, I'm, I'm really liking it a lot. So, uh, to me, this is a really nice, uh, you get all the really deep blacks, you get the vibrant colors. Now, the one you see in this video here had the 3K display. And the 3K display was also very nice, but it didn't quite cover the color gamut as good. And it didn't have as great color accuracy, but it was pretty color accurate. If you are going to color grade, if you're going to do video editing, I would recommend going with the one I have here today. This one, of course, because it is that OLED display. It's got the higher resolution, the higher pixel count. It's 3840 by 2400. That's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And there you go. Thermals are looking pretty good. These are very efficient. They were very careful this time around. Didn't want it to overheat. So that's why you're not going to see the greatest performance on this. They had to temper it a bit. They needed to keep it cool. But I think it's a good balance. I think they struck a good balance between performance, thermals, efficiency, battery life. Battery life is better than last year's model. I can tell you that. There's a bigger battery in here now. I think 81 or 82 watt hour battery. So it's a lot bigger than last year's model. And uh, you're going to see better battery life. These are pretty more, you're going to see more efficiency. So you can see here that the numbers for this 3K display, this is not for the 4K plus display I have here, uh, still very good numbers, a little bit brighter than the OLED, but again, black levels were excellent on that. But where you're going to see the really great uh, Delta E score, you're going to see the great coverage of the color gamut on the UHD+, Plus, the one I have here, the OLED display. Uh, people do want to see it. They want to see that 15.6 inch versus the 16 inch OLED would be very useful. Absolutely, yes. So maybe that would be the next video after my review video. I could do that. That would be a good idea. So thank you, Brian, for bringing that up. That might be a good. Um, and I'm glad, uh, hopefully, it would be very helpful. That would be very helpful, right? So we got, let's see, 90 of you watching, 70 likes. So we're starting to get that up. I'd like to see a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, let's get this spread out over to YouTube. For those joining us late, we're looking at the HP Spectre X360 with the OLED display, 16-inch OLED, 16 to 10 display. Uh, UHD Plus, 3840 by 2400. It is absolutely gorgeous. What's being played on this, of course, is the 3K IPS display that I took a look at about a month ago. And that video got about 45, 46,000 views, doing very well. there. And we also have the same IR camera, infrared camera, that allows you to log in with Windows Hello, 1080p, which will be good for working from home, hybrid work environments, Zoom calls. The internal mics were uh, pretty decent. We'll talk about that in, in the upcoming review. The dual array microphones, we'll talk about that. Uh, a lot of features with the Glam Cam, if you joined us late. The Glam Cam uh, gives you a lot of versatility in terms of the beauty mode. And we can show you real quick again. So if I hit this, uh, bring up this key here. 
and I go to the command center, you can see here, you can see here, when we go to the glam cam, you get to see the preview of the camera. And you can see it there. Uh, and, and again, a lot of features. We got the beauty mode, which is on. Obviously, I'm very beautiful, as you know. So don't <laughs> laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. But I am very beautiful. I'm a beautiful man. And kidding. <laughs> and it has the auto frame. So the auto frame, uh, let, we could test it out. Let's close this. The auto frame, if we go to the camera. So let's go to the camera here. Give me a second as we load it up. So the camera is coming up here, and there is the auto frame. So it puts me in frame when I have that on. So uh, a little bit more close than I probably would like. So if we turn off the auto frame, I don't know if we can do it from here. Probably can't. Again, 1080p, 30 frames per second. But if we go back to here, we can go back to here, and then we can turn off that auto frame on the glam cam. And there you go. Now, lighting correction is pretty good. That's a nice feature, as we talked about. Screen distance, I don't know. We got to figure that out. I guess that's how much distance you have. Shoulder surfing, attention tracking, wake on approach, walk away lock. Again, a lot of features in this glam cam. Very impressive stuff. Uh, I like what they're doing. So let me know what you think about it for those joining us late. What side does the pen stick on? So, so it's on the right side, as you see here. This is the pen. See the pen right there? Right there. And then if I want to stick it to the side, I just put it right here. Pretty pretty secure. A little bit of bounce, a little bit of wobble. There's, there you go. So that hopefully that answers your question, Jericho. Uh, <laughs> you're laughing at <laughs> Yes, it can charge via the Thunderbolt 4 ports. In fact, I am charging right now using my Dell 130-watt power adapter from my uh, Dell XPS 17 9710. So it's actually working uh, charging that. So no problem with that. Obviously, it comes with the barrel pin connector adapter, 130 watts as well. That one will charge, uh, you know, freeing up your two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. You got one here and one there. Uh, so for those wondering, they're on the same side. Kind of wish they were spread out. Maybe one on this corner, one on that corner would have been great, but they chose to put them on the same side. But but using the barrel pin connector, of course, you are able to... Um, we can all go here. You are able to uh, use it, freeze up the two other USB-C ports. So that's why you want to use that. Uh, wait, does the pen stick on the side of the display? Yes, Jericho is the side of the display. That's, thank you for showing that. No problem. No problem. Again, here it is. And of course, you know, it's a two-in-one convertible. I can disconnect this and disconnect this, and I can just put it into the different modes. You get tent mode, okay? And then, of course, you have stand mode, a little bit heavy, not the lightest, you know? And then, of course, you have tablet mode. And then you see it there. And you can use it with the pen. And I'm not left, I'm right, I'm left-handed, not right-handed, but you can use the pen with it. Uh, you can scroll up and down and so forth. So you have a lot of options when it comes to that. Use your finger. Six, it is 60 hertz, people. It is 60 hertz. So not on 90 hertz, not 120 hertz, like we saw on the Surface Laptop Studio or the Surface Pro 8. 60 hertz. Battery life so far, my initial results after having about not even a little bit more than 24 hours, uh, you're looking at about seven to eight hours on an OLED display, which is not bad. And uh, I got over 13 hours continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits on the 3K IPS display that I already reviewed. So there you go. So any other questions or comments, let me know. It's 41 minutes into the live stream. 93 of you watching. We've got... 84 likes, so that's been pretty good. Uh, what is the refresh rate? As I mentioned, 60 hertz. Thank you, uh, Mat Matsias, Matus, for uh, letting us know. Hope I didn't butcher your name. Camera still a little grainy, still 20p. No, no, Matus, this is 720p. I don't want to give you the wrong information. No, it's 720. Uh, it's 1080p. It's 1080p, as I mentioned. Um, you can see it here. 
Let's bring up the camera. This is important, people. And the reason I'm harping on it is because we, we need to have Zoom calls. We need to work from home. This is a 1080p camera. This is not grainy. This is not grainy. Uh, it actually looks pretty good. So, and if I connect this back up, I can show you on the stream here. So there it is. So, and it keeps, you know, I got to, I tell you, it's uh, much better, much, much better than the 720p webcam we've seen in the, in the last year or so. And it is a lot better. The walk away, walk on feature. Yeah, I'm going to show you that in the video. I did some capture. I did do that. We'll show you that in the video. Uh, laptop mode is, over. this is a two-in-one convertible. You're going to have a little bit of uh, screen wobble. There's just no way around it. All convertibles do this. So this is the million dollar question, right? Buy now or wait for Alder Lake? Well, here's the thing. If you need it now, buy it now. I don't know when this is gonna get updated. It probably wouldn't be till late, late in the year if it does. And if you need, if you're looking at this, get it now because um, unless you wanna wait for the next version, which will have, you know, again, I don't know what delays or stuff, but it'll have 12th gen. Um, it would be better, I guess, but again, that could be a ways away. So this was delayed, of course, because of the stock supplies for the during the pandemic and so forth that had played into that. Uh, there were not a lot of availability of this. Uh, took me a while to get one. Remember, I got the one from uh, Best Buy about a month ago, and that was hard to get. Once I got that, I was able to give you that video, did well. And now we have this one here. So there you go. You're gonna have to be patient with these OEMs. They're doing the best they can, again, Nobody wants to work right now. There's a lot of people out of work. The people are just refusing to work for whatever reason. Uh, not great. And then there are ships sitting with supplies, uh, sitting in the dock, sitting waiting to get unloaded at the docks, but there's nobody to unload these uh, products and so forth. So that's been a big, big problem uh, worldwide. So uh, I don't know what else to say other than if you need it now, if you can find it, get it now. It could be a year away from till this gets updated to 12th gen. If they do, I don't even know. I have no inside information. So buy now or wait. Again, that's for up to you. And again, we're going to see a lot of the 12th gen, other OEMs, HP is going to have 12th gen stuff coming out. So you may want to wait just in general because we're on the verge of getting all that stuff in. I've got a bunch of that stuff coming in. So you may want to wait anyway. But if you need something now, that's my motto has been, you need to get the job done, buy it now. You know, you got to use, you got to have something, right? Better than nothing. So there you go. All right, 90 of you watching, so that's been pretty good. How's everybody been? Good to see everybody. Uh, back again with another live stream here. So what do you think about the HP Spectre X360 so far? Uh, I'm liking the 3050 RTX GPU, not the, you know, it's not going to be overwhelmingly, performance based but it definitely is a performance boost over the integrated iris xe graphics there's no question about that has the same cpu so you're not going to see a big bump in cpu performance between the entry level blue model that i reviewed from best buy or this model so uh it's a nightfall black as you see here uh it does collect some fingerprints you can probably see some of them uh the blue looks beautiful to me i like them both they're pretty nice uh, looking laptops, that's for sure. So whether you like the nocturnal blue or you like the uh, nightfall black, it's just a matter of personal preference. Does the pen only stick to the right side or can it stick to the left side? I don't think it can stick to the left side, but I'm not sure. No, it doesn't stick. See, it only can stick to the right side. Right there. See, no, that doesn't stick to the left side. Nothing there. So it sticks to the right side. And I'm left-handed, so kind of wish it was on that side. But better than nothing, and it's pretty secure. Now, whether you put it in a bag, would it fall off? You may have to be careful. I'd rather put it in a pocket uh, of the bag or, or in your briefcase or whatever it may be. Uh, you may want to do that. You don't want to lose the pen. And the pen, again, for those joining us late, the pen and that full leather sleeve come in the box, uh, all said and done. And if we go to Best Buy here, now, the pricing is pretty interesting. Uh, Best Buy has it, I think. Uh, let me see what they're showing it for right now. 
Give me a second. Okay, so if we go here, all right, so this is Best Buy, and you can see here, that's the 13.5 inch, the top one. Let me look for the 16. Let me actually put in 16. Sometimes it's hard to find this stuff when you're going to search through Best Buy. 15.6 uh, inch, 16T, are they do? Do they? I'm sure they still have it. I'd be surprised if they didn't have it. Here it is. So this 1629 for the 3K Plus display. That was the one I, I reviewed. They're showing it for 1629. That has 16 gigabytes. As this one, by the way, I didn't talk about this. 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. It's the Oct Optane memory, which I'm not the biggest fan of. The Nocturne Blue, uh, same as the, this one is, of course, obviously the Nightfall Black. I don't know if they're carrying the OLED. I didn't see it, but let me see. There's the 15.6 inch. I don't know if they're carrying it. Let's go over to the HP website. Um, let's see if we can find it at HP. And here you go. So this is the their landing page. Let me see if I can get to the buy. There's the ports. Uh, let's shop for it. So here it is. Here's a 16. So if you want to go to HP's website, $14.99. So that's on sale right now. So I'll put links when we're all done. Uh, $14.99, Best Buy coming soon, according to Brian. $17.99 for the um, one that we talked about. Uh, last time, but if you're going to customize it, let's go over to customization. We can spec it out with an OLED. So we would go down here, add another seven hundred and forty dollars for the. Uh, this is going to give you thirty-two gigabytes of RAM with the OLED, or if you want to go with the one I have here, sixteen. Let's just keep it consistent. And then, of course, there's the OLED display. They're all low blue light displays, by the way, which is good. There are two IPS displays and there's two OLED displays. Um, I have the one terabyte on my unit, uh, that HP sent over. And then we want to go with windows six E Wi-Fi six E rather Wi-Fi six E I, I should say. And that's Bluetooth 5.2 combo. So 1989, just a shade under $2,000 for when it's all said and done. Uh, I don't know where 2029 is. Uh, but you found it on Best Buy for 2029. Thank you, Matt, Matt Seuss. So if you want it at Best Buy, they'll have it. I don't know if it's in stock. I guess it depends where you are. Uh, if you want to go to HP, let's see the shipping times. It says February 28th, which considering that there are some laptops three to four months delayed, that's not actually too bad. So we're looking at about a month away for shipment on this. And it's uh, maybe on hopefully it'll ship quicker. But that is the deal, people. So 1989 for the one I have at over at hp.com. The one, and it's got a starting price of $14.99, which seems to be on sale. So if you want that entry level model, you might be able to do it. Martin says he's already has the Spectre X360 14 and ordered the 16 OLED now in Memphis, Tennessee, in the hands of FedEx. Good luck with that. Can you show the 14 side by side with the 16 to see the physical difference? Uh, I can. I don't. I'd have to get the 14 out of uh, my storage back there. Uh, it may just take too long, but I will show it to you in the video. I will show you the video. I promise. Okay. Um, I've done plenty of videos on the 14. It is smaller. It's a taller nature in terms of the display. I'd have to find it, but uh, it's back there somewhere. But I can. I can bring it out. Uh, if we have some time, well, I'll definitely show it in the video. That's for sure. 83 of you watching, but we do have 95 likes. So that's been pretty good. All right. We're getting close to an hour. We got 51 minutes. Any other questions, uh, comments? According to the Davidas, personally a fan of HP Spectre series. I own the 13.5, 360, two in one from 2021. Literally, literally, the only drawback is battery life. If it is OLED, the thing goes from 100 to zero relatively quick. 
OLED will dr definitely drain more battery. Uh, I'm seeing, though, much better battery life than I did on last year's OLED model on the 15-inch. Uh, this definitely has a bigger battery, as I mentioned, at 81 or 82, I don't remember, but it's it's bigger than the, I think, the, the whatever was last year. It was actually kind of small. But they're able to put a bigger battery, and they're able to put a more efficient processor and better cooling. And I think the, we're seeing the results. I'll show you the numbers in the full review. But it's looking good so far. I just got it yesterday. So let me let me do my benchmarks. William says it's an overall very good PC. No matter which PC one can buy, there's no such thing as the perfect PC. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. There are very good laptops out there right now. Uh, they're getting better and better. And, and, we're, and, I, and as I mentioned a couple of weeks back in the, probably I think the last live stream, I said this is going to be the year of the PC, the laptop, the PC, smartphones, uh, have seen less innovation the last year or so, and I don't think they're in a good trend. I think PCs are starting to really uh, get people's attention, and I think they're going to be, this is going to be a big year for the PC. CES really showed a lot of what's coming, and I think it's exciting. It's an exciting space to be in right now, and I'm glad I'm in it. Uh, how are the speakers, according to DTL? The speakers are really good. The speakers are really good. Um, we've got two tweeters and two woofers on this. Uh, I will talk more about it, but uh, good volume, good bass, good mids. I'm very, very impressed with it. They're banging Olfson speakers. They're branded here. Uh, I think they're very good. Now, I, I heard sound coming through these, so I'm assuming that they're coming from here, but there are four speakers on this, two on the bottom, the two woofers and the two tweeters. There might be some vents here as well. They got rid of that grill on the top, as I mentioned, and there you go. Should we wait? Again, that's the big question. If you can wait... You want to go with 12th gen? I don't know when they're going to update this to 12th gen. Could be late late in the year. I don't know. They, they haven't said. They just were able to get this one out. So, again, maybe premature to say when that's going to come. According to William, I see most of the 16-inch, 16 by 10 PCs this year. Most do not have a numpad. Look, at the external, look into an external numpad. Yeah, I'm seeing that trend as well. Uh, you're not seeing the numpad as we used to see. So, there you go. Martin with a super chat, another 20 Canadian dollars. All right. Thank you, Martin. And uh, thanks for the great work. I appreciate that, man. I, it's much appreciated. I'm glad to see uh, support from the community. It's been outpouring of support. It's been great. I really, really appreciate it. So another great super chat from up north, uh, our friends up north. I'm glad to see that. All right. Uh, according to Brian, I've always liked the OLED uh, screens, even for everyday stuff. The color and contrast have made the smaller screens very usable. I'm a big fan of OLED. If you watch my channel, you know that. Uh, I'm a huge fan of OLED. I know there are people who have the burn-in issues, and so I haven't had any burn-in issues. I think the technology has gotten really good. Uh, not to say you won't get burn-in, but uh, I love the deep blacks. I love that super high contrast that you get with an OLED uh, it's just unparalleled to me. And I've tried, you know me, I've tried uh, hundreds, if not hundreds and hundreds of displays. I want to say thousands maybe at this point, hundreds of displays. And I always seem to come back to OLED as being my favorite. Just something so great about the deep blacks, the vibrant colors. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Okay, uh, according to Dem Demno Techmaster, Demno Techmaster, happy to see you back. Andrew, can you do a speaker test? I want to hear them. I can do it. I'm not really set up for it. Um, I could probably put this microphone towards there and see how it sounds, but you're not going to really... Again, problem with speaker tests on videos and on live streams is that everybody's listening on a different device, on headphones, on maybe laptop speakers. and So you're not going to all get the same results. So I'd have to do a comparison. So let me do that in a video the proper way to really do it. Uh, Aditya is excited about the uh, Asus G14 2022. Hope the price remains the same. I agree. I spoke to Asus. I'm going to get a bunch of stuff, hopefully, from them. Uh, again, hit or miss. We don't know. As soon as I get it in, I'll let you know. But I am excited. Again, like I said, this is going to be the year of the laptop to me. This is going to be a, a banner year of the PC. So Gaming Guru got his 14-inch MacBook Pro. Should I send it back for this? You know, I don't know. That's a great laptop. Uh, again, are you in the Mac camp? Are things like upgradability, gaming, uh, stuff like that, touchscreen, convertible, 
modes are those things you want then maybe you want to take a look at that hp but uh if you're into the mac camp and you love the beautiful uh mini led display and and all that stuff that it does that it brings um you know a lot of the great new features that they brought back such as the magsafe and uh the keyboard's much improved and great performance obviously uh out of that m1 pro and m1 max so if you're happy with that no then you stick with that but if you are interested in gaming and you are interested in upgradability, RAM, S, not SSD, not on this one, but on in Windows in general, like if you want to be able to upgrade your SSD, which you can't do on the Mac, then you may want to look at the Windows side that do offer that, such as this one. So just, again, a matter of personal preference. Don't think I will. Lowest GPU option will be 6700 XD, which is considered a 3070 equivalent price-wise. So... I'm not sure there must be a conversation going on which laptop you're talking about, but I definitely understand we're all excited about the 6000 series from AMD Ryzen, so I I'm looking forward to it. And I agree, Black Panther, you're, you, the OLED is beautiful. I mean, you, you can even see it here on this live stream. Uh, I, I think it's an absolutely gorgeous display. Um, the really great colors and everything. I just think it's just, you know, something special. And, I, and again, I, I know there are detractors to that. They say you're going to have issues with um, burn-in and stuff like that. I, I haven't experienced that. I have not experienced that. So, you know, it's just a matter of what you consider as, you know, what you're willing to deal with and so forth. I think this is a absolutely beautiful, beautiful display. All right, we're coming close to the hour. Oh, you're talking about the uh, G14. And again, I spoke to Asus. Hopefully, I will get that in soon. All right. The, uh, the RAM, okay, so the RAM is not upgradable. It's soldered in. But the SSD is upgradable. And we could take a look at it here. 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 30, uh, sorry about that. 32, uh, let, let me go, let me rewind that a little bit. So getting into this laptop, let's just talk about that first. Getting into it means you're going to um, take this four screws, they're T5 Torx screws, nothing under the feet. You don't have to remove the rubber feet. Use the pry tool. That's it. It's that simple. My review unit, 16 gigabytes, DDR4, 3200 RAM, soldered on board, meaning you cannot upgrade it yourself. Same as the blue model that I looked at about a month ago, same on this OLED model here. SSD to the right, that is a Optane memory uh, SSD, as you see there. Uh, pretty decent reads and writes, not Gen 4 that we've been seeing as of late. So that's something to bear in mind. Doesn't really affect performance all that much, to be honest. Um, here you can see very good reads and writes. I have no complaints on that front. But again, we've been seeing Gen 4 as of late, so that's something to bear in mind. Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2 are options on this, so there you can see that there. Uh, it is slotted in. You can upgrade the Wi-Fi card. You cannot upgrade the RAM. So the, so the only two things upgradable are the Wi-Fi card and, of course, the SSD. RAM is soldered in. You got the two fans together there. Improved cooling. I'll talk more about that in the video. So it's been pretty, pretty good. All right. Any other questions or comments before we call it a live stream? It's been a pretty good one, ladies and gentlemen um i'm actually liking it all right so if i don't see any other questions we can call it the day because i do have a lot more testing to do i do have a lot of other stuff that has come into the studio that i will um i will definitely bring to you very soon i got a lot of stuff coming up so you don't want to miss it i will have my full video on this probably either tomorrow or monday depending on how much i get done today but uh i want to thank I don't want to laugh at myself. I want to thank the moderators. I want to thank the uh, people who gave Super Chats today. Thank you so much. Uh, doing such a great job, moderators. And all those that stopped by and contributed towards this live stream, whether it be in live, obviously through the chat and so forth. I've got a lot of stuff coming up, but I will see everybody in the next video and I will see you very soon. Okay, everybody, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.